Good evening, one and all, and welcome on down to a beautiful exhibition match tonight between the, the Northern Territory Stingers and the Perth Thundersticks. A wonderful night ahead for all of us involved. Ashley Nelson joins me up in the box tonight. How are you feeling? Uh, very well, thank you, Nick. I'm looking forward to this exhibition match, and I really see you know, what the Northern Territory Stingers have to offer. We haven't seen a lot of them over the last uh, five years or so, and it's great to see this exhibition match go ahead so that they can get some experience under their belt, of course, against the Perth Thunder Six as well on their home turf and wonderful that the Fremantle Coburn community, uh, the Magpies down here in Fremantle are getting behind this match as well. It's a great turnout. Before we dive deep into the teams, we'll go sideline with Josh Dwayne, who's going to have a pitch update for us. Thank you, Nick. It has been a wet day here in Perth, but that has calmed down and it's reasonably dry underfoot. So currently around 15 degrees and as long as that rain stays away, we'll have great conditions for what should be an outstanding contest, Nick. Now we'll move into the team list for tonight's affair. There is a lot of new young faces in this Northern Territory side. They're really looking to inject some youth. We'll pull them up on screen for you in a moment's time. We see just there the WA side just warming up, going through their paces. And then T Stingers, as we move through them, I'll go through in numerical order. Trent Mitten, Matt Willis, Matt Bird, Josh Bont, sorry, Robert Duguid, Aidan Park, and Jonathan Paris, Calvin Farmillo, Adrian Lockie, the skipper for tonight, Nick Hill, Jai Clark, Jaden McGregor, Zach Rackus, Nathan Hockman, Luke Broadway, Hugh Wiltshire, Dwayne Abbott, Carl Hopman, Anil Gupti, Cameron Cook, Billy Fay, and Dom Hurd. And when we look down at them tonight, they're a physically big side, aren't they? They are a physically big side, but uh, there's a lot of juniors in this team, a lot of the players in under 21. Uh, the recent tournament played right here in Perth, here tonight. So it's great to see that um, inexperience being able to get the opportunity to play against a pretty experienced lineup that being the Perth Thunder Six. So um, I think that the under-21s tournament, they did really well there. There were probably a couple of teams, that being Queensland and WA, that uh, exerted their dominance, but they'll certainly be happy to get out there tonight, the, the Territory boys, and uh, prove their worth once again. Moving on to the Perth Thunder Sticks, who are false started and already gone halfway through, but we'll start from the top for you once again. In the number one, Trent Mitten, followed by Matt Willis, Matt Bird, Josh Bowen, Chris Bowser, Sasha Thomas, Liam Flynn, Ross Hall, Tom Harvey, Harry Goulding, Brandon Gibbs, Alistair Murray, James Collins, Matt Lewis, Marshall Roberts, Kyle Potter, Ben Taylor, Dan Timmis, and your keeper tonight will be Tyler Lovell. Yeah, a few um, players there to keep an eye out from, especially with lead up to, to Hockey One. This is going to be a, a team that I guess is fairly representative of the team that will take place at the Hockey One come October. Uh, but certainly James Collins, uh, new to the Kookaburras team, is going to be out there tonight. And Trent Mitten, who is a wonderful WA veteran, has come back from over in Europe and will be taking the pitch tonight. And hopefully we might get his experience come Hockey One, uh, depending on whether or not he wants to head back over to Europe or stay with us as well. So uh, if you're watching tonight, uh, you'll get a glimpse of Trent Mitten, what he has to offer this um, this team. David Guest leading up the Perth Thunder Six and I in the coaching box. What's a realistic expectation for him out of a contest like this? Does he want to see the boys push hard? Does he want to see them really warm into this? Or is it about execution plays and actually working on what's going to come up in the big competitions? Yeah, I think they'll be looking towards Hockey One and trying to get, um, I guess, some experience under their belt and trying a few different variations. When you look at the two lineups, you would say that uh, WA would head into this um, as heavy favourites, and that's just based on experience and uh, years on the park. Um, so for me, David Guest would be looking at 
okay, what are the different lineups I can actually trial? Can I trial a few different structures and variations? How does that actually work against a, a team like the, the Stingers? Um, and for Northern Territory, I think it's actually just about, you know, going head to head and really having to sort of compete, um, speaking to the coach beforehand. Uh, all that he wanted was to um, give an opportunity to these guys to show that they are capable of performing at this level and really put the Stingers back on the map again in the Northern Territory as far as the hockey community uh, is concerned. So I'm sure they'll be able to do that tonight and certainly do NT proud. Northern Territory will have the pushback. Setting up really relaxed. They're all cool, calm customers down here tonight at the Fremantle Coburn Magpies home ground. A fantastic new facility. You might see in the background a lot of construction as well. Plenty happening down here. Hockey, schooling, everything going well just south of the river here in Perth on this cool, calm winter night as we get underway to start off this Hockey One exhibition match. WA taking on NT and they'll roll things straight to the back NT. Yeah, <laughs> I just noticed that. A nervy little start out wide on the wing, just a half slip up in play. So the backs are going to have to reset. The press comes hard in the middle. Perth don't want to muck around here. They're going to get a free hit just outside. So that's just tuning into hockey for their first couple of times. This ball is going to have to just travel wide. And they're going to find an entry in here. They've got their first little look inside the D. A wonderful little look here for Perth early. Can they just create that bit of space or pull a nice penalty corner? Plenty of pace on the play here. Everyone trying to figure out where they want to be. Really happy to see play develop here in the opening moments. Just going out of bounds still. Sits here with the Thundersticks and there's a lot of tentative energy here. Everyone wants to just keep ball in play for the moment, Ashley. Yeah, you can just sort of see at the moment WA taking control earlier around the back and um, they'll probably just want to take their time in practicing building up the play, playing through the central corridor like they're just doing at the moment and putting it back out again. Harvey just on the board and you can see the switch wide. So they'll probably have to try and draw out this Stingers uh, defence a little bit because as you can see, everyone's back there. It's a crowded circle to, uh, attacking 25 at the moment. So patience is a virtue. I know that's a cliche, uh, but I think Thunder Six will have to play that way tonight. Getting an entry inside again. Just getting a small deflection. And Dingers will just look to push this one out. Winning the free hit. And a little chance to reset move backwards from the captain Lockie. And he's going to be an important player tonight. Adrian Lockley as well through the centre there. He's really experienced. He's a, the captain of the Premier League side, Aquinas Reds here. And there's a few Aquinas guys out there tonight playing. Um, the Reds competition or the, the Reds team here in WA has a good association with a, a lot of the Northern Territory players. So quite a few of the NT players come here to Perth and end up at Aquinas Reds. And um, it's nice to see Adrian Lockley out there tonight uh, leading this team. Nice pass to Zach Rackus down the left wing and wants to get this inboard straight away. Injecting a little bit of pace on the ball, but nothing there for Aiden Parkin. And the ball will just run over there. Zach Rackett certainly one uh, to keep an eye on for the singers as well. That curly mullet uh, doesn't go astray, uh, but he's recently played in the under-21s and uh, managed to put a few goals on the board as well. So he'll be hoping to get on the board tonight, no doubt. We're only three minutes into this clash. The umpire's just picked up one of the balls and tossed it away. He says that's not good enough for tonight's standard. So a down one. One of the ball boys is going to have an empty hand. Just sitting up here for the Thundersticks to reset play. Nice little interception by Park in midfield. Not Park and Lockley, the skipper. Happy to keep things tight down the left and it'll just run off the left-hand side. Such a good crowd in tonight as well. It's good to see when we have these exhibition clashes. One of the biggest crowds I've seen at a hockey game this season so far and it's sure to only grow. Well, I think hockey's on everyone's mind at the moment. We've just seen the Women's World Cup. We've got the Com Games coming up as Mitten runs through the centre, just trying to feed that ball through to, I think it was a run of uh, Bird, but intercepted. So nice defence there, just blocking up the middle uh, by the territory. But, yeah, as I was saying, hockey's on everyone's mind. World Cup, Com Games. Uh, we had the under-21s tournament here in Perth as well. So it's great to see, actually, hockey getting a bit of coverage and uh, people getting behind it here locally as well. Really settling back deep. Wanting just to assess the play once again, the Thundersticks. Happy to now walk through the middle. Play on the court. Slight little fumble all the way across the back for Gupti. Still really under pressure here now. Real chance for the Thundersticks just over the top. 
that's a dangerous combination up front of Mitten and Bird. They're both experienced campaigners. They spent quite a bit of time together playing in that forward line, so the, the combination work there is great. Um, territory just has to keep forcing them wide. Don't let them play centrally through the middle. Nicely pushed back once again. We called it early here. They're really going to wait patiently, are the Thundersticks. Make sure every single time they push that button and want to enter, they're going to get an effective result out of it. This one easily turned over after a good steal, and they'll get a chance to set up once again. Bowen just flaying it around the back. Not Bowen, Matthew Roberts, 21 and 4. Hard to read on these small yellow numbers here tonight. Going to be a difficult job for anyone calling if this is the jersey they take into Hockey 1 for the season. Right-hand side, easy play across. Just having to struggle across the back. ANT Stingers do well to hold this out, but still under pressure. Deep inside, Matt Lewis is pressing forward just to put a little extra pressure on the ball. Broadway has to circle back now. Skipper Lockley assesses and just wants to get this out. Really nice high stick. Sasha Thomas just stops that one mid-air. It's going to lend a chance once again for the Thundersticks. An errant pass goes out wide, though. So a few wayward errors at the moment and skill execution errors as well by Thunder Six that they'll probably be disappointed with. Um, this isn't their first rodeo, so to speak. We've had the Premier League going on for quite some time. So these guys should be in relatively good nick, but just not finding those easy connections. Hockman. Happy to just buy time. Sends it back across for Gupti, who sends it over the top. Not trapped. Just struggling to get past halfway at the moment. Had a couple of looks down the left wing. It's just going to be when the change-up happens. Can they push through this Thundersticks defence and actually get an attack forward? See plenty of subs roll on and off. Now Thundersticks set, ready to go again. Really cramped corridor here, not offering much in the way of forward ball. Pass was trapped nicely out wide. Here's the injection. They can move forward now. Just spinning around a couple. Balls in ball. Just need deflection. Not quite there. Still alive here for the Thundersticks. Round the corner. Once again inside. Flicking low. Great save. Not letting up any pressure though. Really well trapped. Ben Taylor keeps it in play. Passes it down the left. Sits here for Burt. Just wants to get it in again. And there's a foot there. Free hit just outside the circle. Powerful type pass, Ben Taylor. Switches the angle. And they try coming on the 45. Through the legs underneath, not quite there. Two very good saves in about a minute's time, though. Yeah, Dom Hurd in goals at the moment for uh, the Territory and uh, actually plays a fair bit here in WA as well. So a, a national Kookaburra squad member, Dom Hurd, plays for Vic Park in the local league and a really great reaction there for a quick shot, being able to get those legs together and uh, a bit of a reflex save. So in good nick uh, early, Dom Hurd. Probably have a bit of uh, work to do tonight from the early stages of the game. Zach Rackus doing really well down the right-hand side to win the free. A big chance to reset across the back. Gupti will be feeling it at fullback most of the game here this evening. Receives again and assesses. Sees a bit of space out wide. It's going to have to do good from the defender. Nice intercept and now pace on. Thundersticks out wide. Ball's going to go nowhere. There's our first hit of Collins, uh, as I mentioned before, a player to look out for, part of the Kookaburra squad. Um, not heading over to the Commonwealth Games at the moment uh, with the squad being away, but uh, certainly plenty to look forward to with his development and uh, will be wanting to have a big impact in Hockey 1 this year representing the Thunder Six. Great movement across the back. Once again, the Stingers, 
really well within their own right of how to defensively move the ball, create this space. They're just getting absolutely no bite out of the Thundersticks at the moment, and then they have an unforced error out wide. This is exactly where the danger can come from. Dan Timmis in ball to the front left corner, receives back, wants to find an option inside. It's going to go deep wide, just well intercepted. Matt Willis was on the right hand post, ready to have a crack at that. Isn't going to get an opportunity. The Thundersticks will be able to roll back in again. Can shift this one wider again. They want to go straight, well blocked. Up through the middle, having a good game so far. Gupti, who now wants to roll things forward. He's had enough at fullback. Wants to take three on one on. Gupti over the top, inside, little shoulder on shoulder. And we'll see our first short corner of the night. Yeah, a bit of a careless tackle there in the end. You can just see here working back. And Gupti's been in it amongst it, as you mentioned, at the back for a fair bit and just gone for a little foray uh, forward. And, yeah, Harvey there just coming through and really taking the body. So a good call. Um, Cameron Cook just being <laughs> worked over there by Harvey. And, uh, well, surprise, surprise, it's actually the Stingers that have come up with the, the first corner of the night. So... We talk about efficiency. They've mm. gone up there once, made it into their attacking 25 and come away with the corner. So a great opportunity for them. Where do they go to off this short corner? Do you have any intel for us you found well, out before game? Well, Gumpty looks like he's been doing it all and he's lining up at the moment. So we'll see if he comes through with the goods. Trap nicely. Gumpty tries to go bottom left. Just gets trapped low. Still going to have a chance here if they can intercept this out wide. Might just run away for the Thundersticks, though. Exactly what they didn't want. A big counter-attacking opportunity. Needs to be intercepted and is so nicely by Faye. Just a mass of defenders from the Thundersticks trying to trap them down in that far right corner. All they can do is push down the sideline and they win the free hit and buy themselves some time. Good defence there by the Thundersticks. Uh, Brandon Gibbs, first runner, and just uh, really shutting down the line that Gapti had to work with on the drag flick and really creating a counter-attack opportunity. But as I mentioned, efficiency at the moment, you'd have to say Thunder Six will be disappointed from the amount of possession that they've actually had in their attacking 25. They really haven't got the results just yet. Okay. That one just going loose. Off the foot there of Wiltshire. Left alone, allowed to progress more forward. Inboard ball, Trent Mitten has a little look inside. Needs this one to cross deflection, just wide. Trent Mitten coming in really hard and fast there. Well, that's the danger of Trent Mitten. It was a nice ball on the inside. You can just see that little 3D lift and managed to, well, it almost looked as though it just about got back of the stick as well. But um, I love the endeavour there. You know, he's always looking threatening and certainly uh, looks like he wants to get on the board tonight. Three minutes and 30 seconds to go in this first period. Real arm wrestle taking place. After one forward entry, now Stingers get the chance to look at a second. This goes deep off the baseline though, but they've gotten two opportunities in three minutes. Yeah, better structure there, I think, from the territory as well. Um, beforehand, when they weren't getting too many forays forward, they really weren't getting that depth, where you just saw then that as they went forward, they made sure they had another player on the baseline to really be able to play it forward. Free hit just outside. Moved only just the five. Still a chance alive here. We're going Thundersticks first stick up in the air with that air ball. Yeah, potentially, yeah. So they're in the space first, and so if it's an overhead, you can't run into that space. Weathers there first clean, has right guys, away clean. with it. And it was nicely played on as well, really quickly. Managed to get that shot away, and Heard once again making the save. So he's looking good tonight, Heard. Stingers escape once again. Down that left wing for themselves, trying to keep it alive. Get the deflection they need. Very much an escape route there, taking the rat tunnel up the side every single time. Well, they're just going for territory at the moment. I think it's a good move. Um, they don't want to have a run and gun style of play. They want to build it up. And even if that just means inching up bit by bit, um, just not losing possession, I think is a, a great way to play for the territory at the moment. I think that this WA team is a relatively quick team when they get going. So uh, they don't want to sort of have that run and gun style uh, against them.
past halfway and the final pass to really start the attack doesn't come off free hit thunder sticks one and a half to go here Loose hold, but Thundersticks managed to get down the right-hand side. It's four on one, trying to get that ball inboard. Crosses the baseline, had to be a risky cross regardless. Doesn't eventuate. Are you happy with this first period from both sides as we enter the final minute? I think that uh, both coaches would be relatively satisfied. Um, as far as the Thundersticks are concerned, I think the basic skills have probably been what sort of let them down, that connection and ability to find a corner. As far as the territory is concerned, though, I think that, you know, they've been um, pretty efficient when they've gone forward and certainly uh, taken it to the Thundersticks after a bit of a, a slower start in the first couple of minutes. So they'll be growing in confidence, uh, which is good to see. Like I said, this is such an important match for... Um, the territory getting that experience, um, making himself feel comfortable and known within the, the hockey community once again. Ten seconds to go here, trying to just get that one down. Errant flick of the stick. No free call. Umpire was happy to see it waved away. Runs off the baseline and with two seconds to go, that'll end the first period. 0-0 zero, zero per Thundersticks and the Northern Territory Stingers. Plenty more action to come here this evening. Down at the Fremantle Coburn Magpies home ground. The crowd's in a plenty. And probably just before we go into the huddle, the most surprising thing for me tonight has been the uh, table service burgers at the hockey club. <laughs> they know how to uh, do a good burger down here, that's for sure. And it's, I'm a bit jealous at the moment, actually. Someone's just walking behind me with one. Maybe that can be our little halftime treat. Um, but, you know, none of those burgers for the players. They're solely focused on uh, the game tonight. And uh, I think that they'll be pretty impressed with this uh, first quarter and uh, first hit out. We're heading now down into the Perth Thundersticks huddle. Let's see what the coach has to say. And they got the corner. Okay, that's just one from one. So we've just got to be disciplined and patient that we don't crack through the middle. What I want to see is the AM's getting wide here, but don't park there. Okay, if you if you're wide, come in here, get the striker back, get the DM here. When we're playing against a fall away press, we've got to be clever with our movement. Okay, don't park yourself. Go and fill a spot. To go and take someone else's spot. Okay. Bertie, you had a comment to make? It was just if we if they have the ball in these areas here, we can afford to slant out a little bit, I think, and try and keep it to one side if we're moving across. Because yep. that's when we've been opened up and we've all been sped apart. Yeah, exactly. So we can come out of our shape a little bit and slant and push them to one side and then squeeze with our front two. Okay, if the front two go out, we've got to push in behind them. They can't go out in isolation and leave a big gap in behind they can pass in their midfield. So we go out as a unit. Okay? Um, um, Mitz on the, um, or Willis on the DM, pushing through. Yep, so we held our shape pretty well for a lot of it, but we weren't really putting any pressure on them. Let's see if we can maybe yep. slide someone up and through so um, that, to match. That middle to match DM push up because um, they're going to a back five sometimes. So just push through and then we'll go to a front three if they do that. Make the call and recognition out there, okay? Good work, let's go, come on. Put some of these pants in the way. Clear and concise for the first half there. Of that Thundersticks messaging, they really, really have a couple of key work-ons though, don't they? Yeah, I think um, they were talking about the Stingers are playing a fall-away press and so the key message is making sure that you don't just park yourself and stay there. You have to keep on moving, rotating, switching in order to create channels and space to pass the ball into. So uh, they're looking for a little bit more movement uh, from the, the Thunder Six and um, also efficiency. Um, as uh, Guesty said, but, David Guest, the coach, uh, they've been up in their circle once and got a penalty corner. Thunder Six haven't had the same success. So it's going to be an interesting second quarter. Stingers push back again. Harris finds himself on the right wing immediately. Sees a wall of defenders and sends it back the opposite direction. Big 15 minutes coming up here. First goal all of a sudden starts to get a little bit more important as long as this game stays locked up. Really pressing deep within themselves at the moment. Trying to find a hole, an entry, trying to get the free off the foot. Really well done just to get the stick down on the first occasion from Ross Hall, but then eventually giving it away. 
You can see here, I mean, they're playing with a, a bit of a back four at the moment, the singers, but now and again, you'll also see the attacking midfielder start to drift wide and create that pseudo uh, back five, which David Guest, the Thunder Six coach, was talking about as well. So they'll try and create an overload on one side of the field and play that to their advantage, which Thunder Six need to be aware of in order to sort of protect that side, take the most dangerous person, leave the least dangerous person, which is usually the one on the opposite side of the field. Thundersticks roll back into exactly what was working for them. Build this attack up. It's going to be a factor. Can they keep this ball under control? Can they convert on what their coach wants? Not a must-win game, but certainly it would diminish a lot of spirits if they can't get up in this one convincingly. Well stolen out wide. And craftily left behind. Had to get the feet out of the way and winning the free nicely. Yeah. Lots of good hockey from the captain there. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you said. I mean, it's not a must-win game, but it says a lot about the attitude that you want your team to have. And uh, heading into Hockey 1, WA is a very proud state. And there's an expectation that they'll certainly be in finals contention um, or up for the medal matches. So you want to set that bar high right from the get-go. And that's making sure that you put games like this uh, to bed. They are a more experienced team. They've had a Hockey 1 team in uh, that league for a long period of time. And uh, the team for the Stingers is filled with under-21s players. And so it is a match that they should win. Especially if the Stingers can come away with a win here. Adelaide would be licking their lips as well, knowing that they're a feeder club. Absolutely. So that's the way it's going to be working this year for Hockey One, is that unfortunately the Stingers aren't involved in it, but that doesn't mean that their talent can't be recognised and uh, they have aligned themselves with Adelaide Fire. So I think there's about six players at the moment in the Adelaide Fire squad that hails from Northern Territory, which is great. And hopefully maybe as the program gets a bit more established once again, like it was right? in the day, mm. um, we can see the Stingers come back into the Hockey One fold. That's the long-term plan. That's the aspiration. But in the meantime, certainly um, Adelaide Fire is going to be uh, their home. Thundersticks just at the back once again. Harry Goulding lobs one over the top. Not able to connect out wide with Ton Harvey. Over here, guys. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. There we are. Too good, just milking a little bit of time before he gets us restarted. Great ball. Just not trapped cleanly there by Faye. Got himself in all sorts, won the free hit, recovered that situation nicely. He'll just lays in board again. Good composure from the Northern Territory Stingers. Really pressing well. No free there. Just getting out of the way in the nick of time. And the chase is on for Broadway to try to shut down the, what would have been the Thundersticks running away until they give up an unforced error themselves. And there honestly has been a couple too many of them this far in the game. Yeah, it's not something that we're sort of used to seeing and um, they'll be holding themselves to account. There's no doubt about that with uh, the Thunder Six, but they're having to work hard, the Thunder Six, particularly this front line off the press. Um, NT moving the ball nicely. I'm liking the use of the aerial at the moment. Uh, we've seen how effective the aerial ball has actually been in the under-21s recently. A number of great goals scored from it. So uh, we might see that come into to use a little bit more over the next couple of quarters. Great little bit of stick work, just trying to stay on top. Unfortunately, unable to keep that one under control. It was a great little inboard ball from Josh Bowen. Yeah, mate, yes. Yeah, I thought it was ah, stick work. Can't help but think while I watch as well. It's got to be a bit of a Northern Territory tactic, used to playing in such hot conditions that they're making the Thunder Sticks move. They know exactly how to make an opposition move against them and make them tire them out. Obviously, 16 degrees and cloudy here tonight. Not going to take full effect, but definitely is a style they seem to want to play with. Yeah, well, the 21s boys will certainly be conditioned, if not a little bit tired, though, for uh, the Stingers. But they've been training hard for quite a while now. They're, they're match fit. Uh, they've had a, a couple of weeks of intense Outside, games. And so tonight Outside. they're probably physically maybe a little bit more prepared than what a few of the Thunder Six uh, guys will be out there at the moment that have just really been participating in the Premier League. So the pace of the game, the fitness of the Stingers might be catching the Thunder Six guys out just a little bit at the moment. Another little turnover from a prime opportunity. Free hit 
Inside the 25, turned over again. Not out of trouble yet, are the Stingers. But that free hit will certainly help. Bowen leaves it alone. Well worked down the left again. Matt Willis just struggling to get it under control. Composes himself, sends it back. Having a little peek over the top. Not wanting to go there, just shifting right instead. Center ball comes and three stinging across. <laughs> From the Thundersticks, free hit. Gets gained, but turnover. About a 40 meter pass. Great tackle around the corner. Jonathan Paris just causing a ruckus out there. It might have been Adrian Parker. Eight and a half to go in this second period. Still a deadlock here. Good movement here by the Thunder Six. That central corridor just opening up, but that's a nice step up there by the territory. Zach Rackus, who's looked likely on his one attacking line so far, just flicks that one across. Now they're inside. Corner, mate. Yeah. Gets the corner nicely. Didn't think the umpire spotted off the knee there, but second penalty corner hit, sorry, short corner for the NT Stingers. Yeah, Rackus once again getting amongst it. Look at that drag inside, so really quick hands there. Plays it out to the outside, and uh, Jaden McGregor getting on the end of it, just forcing the penalty corner. Um, hitting Harvey on the foot yeah. on that occasion. So, well, another attack and uh, another penalty corner. Um, certainly wanting to get a better outcome than the, the last time that they had their penalty, but promising signs once again. Similar setup. Gupti in 17. Looks to be the intended receiver. Blocked nicely, no. then off the post on the yep. left-hand side. In here, guys. In here. Good. Corner ball. Ball five, mate. Too good just to reset. Will Chire. Has a look inside. No call. Thunder Six try to escape. Free hit once again, just off foot. Looks like they're really happy to maybe just spend a bit of time down here. That ball's not going to help. Well, there's no rush to go forward. Play it around the back, open the channels up. As I said before, when you're playing a fall away defense, you really need to be patient and wait for the channels to open themselves up. So that's what they're doing nicely at the moment, the territory, and also probably buying themselves a little bit of time just to catch their breath. Not defending is the best defending. Structure, structurally good though as well. You know, when you're wanting to go forward, sometimes you can get caught out not sort of maintaining a, a back three or four. Uh, but they seem to be maintaining their shape quite nicely and really making sure that any counter attack is covered. Another free hit right near the baseline. Stingers just give that one away. Would you be getting nervous? No. Plenty of time. I think it was evident in the under-21s gold medal match for the girls. Uh, WA was 2-0 down with uh, a couple of minutes to go, and they managed to score two late goals, even things up, and it was Victoria that ended up coming away with the win on shootouts. But it just goes to show that... If you maintain composure and also possession of the ball, you can score relatively quickly in hockey, even though it sometimes takes about or well, 59 minutes to do so. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly is. Once you get to this level as well, once one of the best players spots the gap, he's going to hit that three or four times in five minutes and it's going to lead to something. I think also that you, you wouldn't really be too concerned if you were um, David Guest, Thunder Six coach. I mean, there's a lot of experience to come back into this team as well. Uh, the Commonwealth Games coming up, and I think that at last count, there was about four members of the team that's away at the moment uh, representing Australia. Aaron Saluski, who's so demanding through the midfield, he's away. Jake Harvey as well. 
on the outside and defensively a really good leader and then you've got Ben Rennie in goals and Tom Wickham out front so um, you'd be resting pretty easy with those guys knowing that they're going to come back in for hockey one. Yeah, Jake Harvey's had an unbelievable year so far every week I've seen him play just such a general out there being down pitch side for him and just seeing the way he controls things on the pitch and on the bench. Yeah, defensively very strong, but I like the way that he can also counter and create attacking opportunities just on the, the rebound. Um, he's a quick player, really nice set of skills in terms of outlet ability just with his passing. And uh, I think that, you know, he's going to be a long-term player for the Kookaburras as well. Similar setup, Left side, the press coming from the Thundersticks. Not allowing the Stingers just to exit this one easily. Going to have to play for free down the wing. Good tackle, though. Doing well to just get body across the ball, not getting contact on it. The sticks in no rush to inject pace into this one in the attack yet. They really want to listen to coach's orders. No one's getting frustrated, which is probably the only positive they can take out of being scoreless so far. They're not throwing these possessions away. Little loose at the back there, Ben Taylor. Plenty of time to recover, though. Good lead up forward, turning nicely. Now they will look to go in and just missing out on the right-hand side. Talk about players that can turn it on. Matt Bird, certainly one of them uh, in the forward line, just uh, sort of drifting between the midfield and the forward line at the moment. Looks like um, they're actually playing sort of more with a, a front to the Thunder Sticks and then sort of have three through the midfield. So seems like Matt Bird's kind of uh, going through the midfield and then quickly getting into the striker line when need be as well. Aerial ball, real long, missed trap, chance once again, just not quite there, Zach Rackus. Would have been three for three on the actual breakaways that this team has had. Clean bold. Nice wide ball. Entry inside the 25 immediately. Inboard looking for something. Not quite there. Parking just a chance. Turn it over. Send this one down the right hand side for Cook. Loose pass. Couldn't find Rackus. Turning over once again. Two and a half to go in this second period. Such great skill on offer here across the back, the Thundersticks, until they give it away. Managing to win the free this time. And then a little bit of frustration kicks in. They just want to get it inboard now. Waste no more time. It's running. It was kind of just that loose ball forward there. Nothing really coming from Kyle Potter. Just wanted it in. Broke structure for a moment and gives it away. Yeah, just looking a little bit direct at the moment. And part of that is... Uh, probably the leading by the strikers at the moment. So maybe just starting to get a little bit tired and not really getting the depth and width that they probably need in order to be available for the attacking midfield, forcing them to go direct because they're hiding behind that uh, central defender. And if there's one thing that you should give people credit for at this level is that they're going to be able to make that trap if they're holding the hotline, so board a goal uh, particularly well, which most good sweepers should be able to do. Coming up on the one minute mark, just before half time. Hunnestick's just getting a little bit more vocal out there. They want to make something of this final minute. Don't want to leave this half empty handed. Start pressing forward through Gibbs here now. Trap nicely stolen. Time to work. Luke Broadway settles things, ends up going backwards off Hockman. Direct ball is just going to buy some time as well. 50 seconds left. Big aerial flick. One more roll of the dice here for the Thundersticks. Not 100% controlled, but a little bit down to luck there. Counter-attacking opportunity. Need to look long down the left. Broadway was working so hard for the ball. Now just stuck with Parkin on the left-hand side. They win the free hit. 20 seconds left on the clock. One big chance.
Thunderstix really press forward. Want him to force an Aaron pass. And out this half nicely. And that brings up the halftime siren. So still nil all here. It's been an interesting start to this game. Both teams probably happy with their result, but Northern Territory got to be the happier of the two. Yeah, I think they'll be pretty impressed with uh, what they put together this uh, first half. And uh, certainly before the game, if they said they're going to come away with uh, zero all at halftime, they'd be pretty happy with that. And Adrian Lockley certainly uh, one of those players that has been working hard in the middle of the field for the territory, and I believe that we've got him on the sideline now. Yeah, thanks very much, Ash. Uh, Adrian, how did you see that first half? Yeah, look, it was pretty good, uh, pretty even both ways, I thought. Uh, we defended well, and if we get our opportunity, I'm sure we'll take it. The intensity seems to be right up there. What's the message for the second half? Yeah, look, intensity from both teams is right up there. Um, I guess it's a matter of whoever takes the opportunities from in this next half is going to win. Best of luck, second half, mate. Thanks. Back to you guys. So Perth Thundersticks, Northern Territory Stingers, zero all here at halftime. We're going to take a short break and we'll join you back live for another great half of this exhibition match.
Welcome back one and all to the second half of this state exhibition match between the Perth Thundersticks and Northern Territory Stingers. It was scoreless in the first half. Spectacular start to this game, a spectacular night down here at the Fremantle Coburn Magpies home facilities. Brand new two-year-old facility and certainly putting on the goods. Burgers delivered right to where you are in the stands. Plenty of seating, only just enough to get everyone in and actually a big second half heating up. Yeah, well, two penalty corners uh, to the Stingers weren't able to put it away, but certainly had plenty of attacking prowess. They sort of came good in after the first five minutes. As for the Thunder Six, well, a few turnovers are probably not as clean with their skills that they would have liked, and uh, they've had a few attacks, few shots on goal, but uh, haven't really been able to convert any um, or get penalty corners. And I think that's a bit remiss of the Thunder Six. They've got a great uh, battery. Uh, a couple of good drag flickers, and so maybe this half we're going to see a bit more of a focus effort on getting outcomes in the circle. Robert Duguid did the cleaning up work and just tried to find Zach Rackus down the right hand side. But an immense amount of pressure being brought on by Harry Goulding forces the ball over the line. The Stingers outfit so impressive so far from everything we've seen. Certainly looking at joining the hockey one in a couple of years if they keep on pace with teams like this. Great ball, trying to go 3D over the top. Just pushes it wide. Yeah, as you mentioned, uh, this really is an aspirational side and uh, we've known Northern Territory to have a wonderful hockey program in the past. A couple of great Australian players have uh, come from Northern Territory. We've got Brooke Paris at the moment, part of the, the hockey ruse. We've had Des Abbott, a wonderful player that was at the Kookaburras. I think that's investing a lot of time back up in the NT at the moment to uh, grow the game once again. And part of that is really trying to re-establish the Stingers program. And, and that's what tonight is all about. Um, giving experience to players and uh, making it an aspiration to get back to the hockey one. Stingers were building nicely down the left there, just unable to capitalise on what was in front of them. Turnover comes, ends up with Matt Bird, who will push this one down to the right-hand side. And not for a lack of trying, Harry Goulding in the first half started really running some lines late and really started working around the defence. It looks like he's going to take the exact same approach here. Wants to start pushing these defenders around. Inboard ball just left alone from outside. Keep it happy to watch that one roll through. Well, Bird on the back sit there, just trying to work the ball in, um, but slightly misreading. It went one way bitten. I think Bird was looking the other, so didn't quite get the connection on that time. But a nice high press there by the Thunder Six, really trying to put this uh, defence under pressure, get the turnover and only have that one line to beat. You'd be itching if you're Mitten and Goulden as well. Both up front for the majority of that first half, just scratching for opportunities. But they only had two, three, four real chances in open space as this one's played on. Almost a little deflection on the inside. Zach Rackers has been amazing, who gave that inboard ball. Turned over. Looking to add a little bit of pace on things. Now sits up a Trent Mitten, wins the free and happy to move it forward. Settling across the back. Balsa, good in ball, great flick as well. Just gets out of trouble nicely by Aiden Parkin, but that was a handy little touch by Harry Goulding. Yeah, nice timing. One touch in the circle, try and minimise the number of touches in the circle in order to get the shot away quickly or at least link in with the teammate. Good run forward and overlap there by Borzer as well. He'll be one that we want in a penalty corner. You've got him, you've got Trent Mitten, uh, Flynn as well, uh, that can take penalty, or sorry, um, drag flicks. So penalty corners a must for the Thundersticks at the moment. Comes in board once again. Now they've really got to start hunting for it. Keeper comes out nicely. They're all across it at the moment. The Stingers, they are not giving away an inch. They're certainly getting threatened, but objective number one seems to be stay out of the way. Do not give them the penalty corner. Jason Butcher, their coach, is really big on uh, structure and making sure that you maintain it, absorb the pressure. When you get your opportunity, you go forward. But you can just see that they're holding the centre structure nicely. They're allowing um, the Thunder Six to have the ball around the back. I mean, it's the least dangerous position, right? So let them play around with it around the back all day, but just hold the centre corridor. Don't give them an inch. Thunder Sticks set up across the back again. 
Stingers send one shooter up. But the rest of them not biting an inch. Turned on the inside. Good little look. Flicked back. Trying to find something. Staying out of the way nicely. And once again save. Zach Rackus just gets in there. Clears ball out. Not out from the pressure yet. They'll look left this time. Pass to absolutely no one. And that's got to be a big win for the Stingers. Well, Zach Racker's doing it at both ends of the field, and that's what you look for in a striker at the moment. You can see he's starting to get high up into this forward line well as well, but working back, making sure that you cover off defensively. So someone that's a striker that can get back defensively and then also push forward and has the, I guess, the, the gut running and the capability in doing so, that's what you're looking for in a good player. Potter brought that down nicely and just feeds it on the inside. Thundersticks now have them a little bit out of position. Go for the risky ball. Not quite there once again for the Thundersticks. Maybe that time was the time to actually wait a little bit. There was no need to go quickly there. And all the stingers out, pushed oh. way left. That's on the roof. Well, everyone's ducking for cover here, but I think it's uh, safely landed on the roof. The kids are running, scurrying, seeing whether or not they can pick up a spare hockey ball. I think there's a ladder big enough to get on the roof out here. Thundersticks, fresh ball. Working this one better. It's just on the inside. Rackus again just gets in the way. Stolen, right-hand side, inboard. It's got to go in, and it does. Maybe last touch, Liam Flynn. It was a great flick across the line. Perth Thundersticks get their first goal of the evening. Little high fives there. Marshall Roberts on the outside here. Just usually you see him in the defence, but a nice intercept pushing forward and a nice cross ball. And yeah, it's hard to see who got the last touch. It might actually have gone to, to Roberts in the end, coming off the, the goalkeeper hurt. But either way, hit across the face of goal. He was going professional side, so really trying to allow anyone coming in to get that deflection. If he hit it too narrow, it could have just hit the sideboard and really not create an opportunity like that. So a um, good effort there by Marshall Roberts to step up get the intercept and finish off nicely, uh, particularly for a defender. Maybe he went, you know what, the strikers aren't getting it done. Let me have a dip. It's just as easy as that. And a sigh of relief for the Perth Thundersticks now. They can relax into this one. 1-0 one is not a lead, but certainly has them in front as now they go aerial. Can't quite see the umpire there. But Perth go up, so they reckon they've claimed the space first. We're going to see a penalty corner Perth Thundersticks, and they could go two for two in a minute. Well, this is the danger. They've held on for so long, the Stingers, and done a wonderful job at that. You don't want to start giving away easy penalty corners to have a goal against you and then also give away a penalty corner, your first for the night. Uh, that's probably disappointing for the coach, Jason Butcher. So Liam Flynn lining up for the Thunder Six. I mentioned before, he's got a wonderful drag flick, but they've got a couple of options, uh, the Perth Thunder Six. So it's nice to have that variation given... Any number of combinations could be on the field. Well trapped, not quite. Thought they had that all done and dusted, looking for the top right, but they just left it behind. Thundersticks can try and maintain possession, but well stolen out on the right-hand side. Stingers look to put a bit of pressure on the ball. McGregor just gets caught outside. They'll reset here, and they want to move quickly. Once again from the back all the way out, Gutty comes forward to take that pass. Wins another free, and he wants it again. He's got Faye circling around the right. Side against him. Back for Hill. Looking for the free. He really wants to draw the defense in. Hoping for something. Gets deflection. They'll take it. Not much on offer. Adrian Lockley just had to try pass it in. Stolen, just on the circle. Free hit, Thundersticks. Saw the immediate change in attitude from the Thundersticks as well. As soon as they were under a bit of pressure, they went, radio. we're 1-0 up, let's just lock this back down. We don't want to be in a tie ball game. Took us almost three quarters to score once. Really good diving turnover. Lockley tries to get it down the right-hand side. Gets it back from the 1-2. Has it in control. Gets the foot itself off. Right on the circle. Inboard. Plenty of thunder sticks around. There's no one coming in from the Stingers there. 
just lacking that final option and allows the Thunder Sticks to roll away here. But since there was no one back, no one forward, I should say, all the Stingers were back, ready to defend this one. Well done by Duguid to take it out of the air. So it is fascinating, as I sort of said at the, the start, if I was David Guest, I'd be trying a few different combinations and seeing um, how you would actually play a game uh, come Hockey 1. And at the moment, they've opted to play without a goalkeeper. Uh, so really testing out their defensive unit um, and also seeing whether or not they can create and generate more attack by perhaps having an extra field player. So uh, interesting move, but uh, these are the things that you can try now before Hockey 1 starts. Certainly as well. If you keep away that goal after some valiant defending, then you're back under pressure. 1-1 is maybe the score they want to be at. And then force a win late in the fourth term. It's good to see. That's what exhibitions are all about. Right-hand side. Not much on offer for Bowser. So flicks back across. We find ourselves on the far other side of the ground. In board. Trapped nicely. No free given away just yet. Finding it there and should head across for a penalty corner. Yeah, well worked onto the foot of Duguid there. He's just a bit angry by himself, uh, at himself there, Duguid. Just lacked a little bit of composure. You can see here that he's trying to close in and goes in with that backhand and Flynn just working it onto the foot. So a little bit rushed there by the Territory Stingers. Let's see to get back focused again. Sort of seems as though the Thunder Six have the foot on the throat and they're starting to, to squeeze at the moment. Looking ready to trap this. Misses again. 0 for 2 in this third period. Trapping these penalty corners. Shot goes up high, brought down. Great goalkeeping. How they've kept both of those shots out. Tremendous work. Not out of danger yet. Bowen. Shifts right. Good half a tackle there. Stingers try to gain some ascendancy, but bailing out nicely. Thundersticks can roll through again. Just rolling that one down the right-hand side. A little bit loose, nothing much Marshall Roberts could do, but watch that one go over and throw a stick out. We just see the missed trap once again, but these two shots here. So well kept, and then just fortunately enough, goes between the knee pads. <laughs> Would you be disappointed you don't get one of those two? <laughs> when it was a good shot like that, a one-take, you'd be disappointed that it didn't come off, but... Uh, her has been keeping very well and uh, managed to pull through again with that double save. Uh, amazing reflexes, the ability to make that initial save, get back up off the ground, reposition, make the second save and get that coverage. Um, he's done well on that occasion. Off the back of a good tackle by Parkin. Number six get it straight back, having a shot out on the right-hand side. Sasha Thomas found himself with a rare opportunity to flick that one right. Corner ball taken quickly. Intercepted well there. Parkin just plays it. Out for another Thundersticks corner. Good push of the ball. Extreme right hand corner. Just gets flicked up aerially. Leave off Farmillo's stick. Just racking up the, the chances here foot there pressure finally relieved and it's all well and good being this controlling in the game but one nil should be two maybe three maybe by this point now with this amount of possession yeah certainly uh, i think with the, the penalty corners uh, they'll be disappointed with the execution of that the couple of penalty corners that they have had just with the the missed trap it's just so crucial to be able to get the push out straight the trap right to give you drag flick at every opportunity in order to, to score so uh, something that the thunder six will probably look at um, and clearly refine and practice. But as I said, you know, these guys haven't actually played together for some, quite some time together as a unit. So these are the things that they're going to have to work on ahead of uh, October. 
Structurally using the extra number well, though. Haven't had a keeper for four or five minutes now. Well, they're generating a lot more attack than what we've seen, uh, and they've also had the outcome of penalty corners, which we haven't seen in the past two quarters. So you'd say that they are using, utilising it uh, pretty well. I certainly think um, Matt Bird on this right-hand side has been used to good effect. Uh, he's managed to... Uh, get into the circle a couple of times or at least uh, get the ball into the circle. Here he goes again, just trying to cut in on the inside but finds the forehand of the defender. But the link between him and Roberts have been pretty good on the right-hand side, so I think that's where they're sort of creating a lot of their opportunities. Yeah, Wilchar has been good, tagging him up on that right-hand side. It's just a little bit of a pest. Hasn't been able to cleanly get it away on most occasions, but... Certainly has stopped a lot of momentum. One minute 30 to go in this third period. So that's just laid straight out off the stick of Mitten. Ball to the middle. Finds absolutely nobody. Harvey just takes his time, sets. I want to go out left-hand side again. Thundersticks, wait patiently. Sold in nicely. The blind pass doesn't eventuate there. Do good. Sends it right hand side. Great shoulder to shoulder contest there. Winning the three nicely. Wants them just to play that one back like five or ten metres. 45 to go here. Adam Parkin wins the free as well. Still no goal here. Just need to get this one in with 30 seconds to go. One real opportunity. A bit of danger. Back of the stick as well. You can kind of hear it as he uh, connected with it. Didn't quite find the edge of the stick, so it just popped up. Fortunately enough, everyone had good enough reflexes to get out of the way. Just coming off the inside edge. Eight seconds to go. Thunder six going the wrong way, but one more inboard chance. Not quite trapped out there, Midden. That'll bring an end to the third period. It is the Perth Thunder Sticks leading 1 0 over the NT Stingers. A tremendous game so far. If not, if not lacking for a little bit of skill at some points from the Perth Thunder Sticks, you'd say. Yeah, but nice variation. I like the idea that uh, David Guest has decided to switch it up a little bit, take the keeper off, play with an extra field player, try and inject an extra number. Looks like it's coming through the midfield into the forward line. Um, and uh, it's had a good result. Penalty corners, a goal. I think they should be further in front at this stage, absolutely. And that's probably been through poor execution of uh, skills. Um, but the endeavours there and the concepts are there. Um, as far as the Stingers go, I think that um, they've got every opportunity this quarter to get back into it. It's going to be a whole new ball game uh, if they can get that goal on the board. Down now into the Stingers huddle. They've obviously got the extra player. We still need our strikers to double mark. So centre striker have the two fullbacks, or if they're a back three, sink in. And then we're not free behind. So we're man to man behind and we're still trying to double mark like we normally would. Does that, you ever all understand that? Because yeah. we need to sort that out quickly because we're not getting enough pressure out to the ball. So <laughs> sort that out quickly. It's, it's not as it was, but the same principles apply. Then uh, and then getting pressure and then staying in the contest. Yeah? Probably the main thing for us now is we're getting ratty. So we've made some two decisions in a row. Yeah. The Hockman Tourette syndrome. Yeah. Like just keep doing what we're doing, right? Play wide, post up, play through the sideline, get free hits, be strong. We've, you've done an outstanding job, right? They want to play another quarter against us without a keeper on the field. We're going to get a break. We're going to get an opportunity. But we have to keep st sticking to the script and being strong mentally about what's got us to this point. So an amazing job. I'm really proud of you. But let's not just go, oh, well, good shit. Let's fucking finish it off. Let's get the break. Let's get the goal. And let's squeeze them under pressure, yeah? yeah. Do you want to just course. quickly talk about the... So when we're going forward... 45 ball, opposite striker, get in on that post. Okay, have some urgency. If it transfers around, striker comes out, opposite striker, get back to get basics, in get in on that post. Okay. Let's go, boys. Okay. Come on, boys. Jason Butcher going from one of the most wholesome moments of the year straight into the direct <laughs> game plan. Well, uh, this is the beauty of live uh, sport and TV, isn't it? Uh, we can't censor everything, but I think the message there was good. You know, he is proud. They have put in a fantastic effort, and uh, 
I said earlier on that they don't want to get into this run and gun style of matchup between the Thunder Six. They need to work the ball up clinically. That's uh, posting up, winning the free hit, then going forward. So edging up as a group. So attack as a group, defend as a group. Um, as you mentioned, they are. They're playing with an extra number the per Thunder Six. And if they don't want to play with the keeper this half, but they are, they've got one on, um, they could have made the most of the opportunity. So be interesting to see um, if the Thunder Six take their keeper off in this final quarter once again to practice that or maybe David Guesses think that uh, the luck has run out so we better put the keeper back on. Yeah George Magoch gets 15 minutes at the back here for the Thunder Sticks. Good to see some valuable minutes for him. It was Tyler Lovell who went, us, went through the first half for us. Thunder Sticks in control of the ball. Having a little dip over the top just not quite trapped out wide there from Kyle Potter and it runs to the baseline. Great ball, just not held in there. Almost Jada McGregor could do after he just missed that first little touch. Then just going to be left wanting, watching that trail over the sideline. Still not over that speech. I was, I was in. I was out there with him for the good majority there. Then he broke the fourth wall. He was like a proud dad mm. and then just went a little astray, but... <laughs> Uh, they are. They're sticking to the script. You just saw it then. They're playing the ball up the sideline and trying to win the free hit. Um, so hopefully they can keep it up for the final 13 minutes. It's been an impressive display by the Stingers uh, for this game. Nicely through the middle. Mitten just straightens things. Wants to have a look midfield. Pass it off nicely. Big tackle. Which way has it gone? Really good tackle in the end. Stingers come away with the free hit. Half an intercept opportunity. Well rounded out. Liam Flynn just takes it down the right-hand side now. Wants to look for an option. Fires this one hard. It's flicked up. And umpires awarded a goal. 2-0 to the Perth Thundersticks. I don't know who on earth that's come off. Well, the final touch, impressive, and this is that right-hand side run and a bit of a lifted ball, but it's the chaos ball that comes in. You can just see the perfect timing of the striker getting in front and jumping in front of his uh, defender and getting the final touch. So hockey is all about timing. Sometimes it not, doesn't need to be a big lead, just the right time. So a little nick and final touch, and, uh, geez, it's hard to save that if you're a goalkeeper when it's travelling at that speed. Nicely up through the middle. Zach Rackus once again wants to be the difference tonight. You've sniffed it throughout proceedings. Tries to get involved and a good tackle once again. Certainly a good future for him. And the NT Stingers if he keeps playing like this. Hill. A good game as well by Anna Gupti. In the 17 across the back. Gets the ball back now. Decides to go aerial. Tries to get in a bit of space. Foxed out nicely. Broadway left it alone. Thought there was a better opportunity further for Jaden McGregor. Who wins the free? This has got to travel five before coming in. Looking across the front. Just well trapped. Under sticks escape again. Down the right hand side. Flynn prospecting. Gets a deflection and they'll take control just past halfway. Bowser doesn't want to muck around. Gives Flynn another chance who tried to get back for Bowser and then goes again for him. Can he get there in time? Lots of effort on the ball. 2-0 up in the exhibition match. Didn't want to see that go out because it's created a chance here deep. Trying to get that one through and the final pass. Matt Lewis just couldn't get that on the inside corner. Well, Matt Lewis wanting to build on that score. He was awarded the, the goal, I think the one that got the final deflection last time. And he's getting in a dangerous position once again. And once again, generating attack through this right-hand side. So it sort of seems as though it um, is a little bit easier for the attack to, to generate attacking opportunities on the right-hand side because you are on your forehand. But it might just be an area that the Stingers have to shore up a little bit more. Miss trap out wide. Just lets the ball go through Jonathan Paris. Another Stingers attack comes to an end. Bowser. Really nicely turned on the inside. Defence held well with it, not to give anything away. Four's out, four's out. Four's out. Four's out. 
Here, David Gass, the coach of the Thunder Six, just yelling out, saying, "You're in the four. You're in the four. So there's a focus on the defensive setup, making sure that they maintain that back four and defensive structure and integrity." I've got to give it to this Stingers side. They've really broke composure while defending this Thunder Sticks attack all night. It's been on those couple of loose. Loose opportunities down the right-hand side that have led to these later goals. But in this general play mix, once they're flooded back, once they're set, refusing to bite. Trying to turn down the left-hand side, create the opportunity. Advantage off the foot. Good run there by Alastair Murray and also a nice substitution coming on and assuming that left half position, making his way into the back four. Cook spinning, but spins into danger. Manages to hold it, gives it back for Hill to relay across. Nice inboard ball, Hill got it back and sends it forward again. Just bobbles up in the air, it's gonna get stick on stick contact. Thunder sticks win ball sideline. Aerial. Now putting a bit of pace on this game. Sasha Thomas, not Sasha Thomas, Tom Harvey through the middle. Just gives this one out on the right. Matt Bird has been threatening this whole time from the right. This one intercepted, but not out of danger yet. Oh, a bit of miscommunication. Nine minutes to go in this final period. 2-0 the score. This exhibition clash leading into the Hockey One Championship. Hill. Tries to give a nice ball for Faye down the left. Got into trouble but wins the free and pushes on himself. Attacking 25 ball here once again. Hill comes forward, plays for it, and Faye just getting trapped out. Still going to stay here with the Stingers. Not quite a consolation goal territory yet. One here with eight minutes on the clock. They'll still be in with a shot. Getting another good free. Too good. Sends it back, and they want to put the full switch on. They get a little bit of contact off one of the thunder sticks and they're going to get the exact same looking ball on the other side of the field. Intercepted this time though and a chance to run away with it. Goulding turns inside, gives it off and they'll reset form structure and immediately flooding backwards. Stingers accept that the attack is lost and they're trying to just reset. Great ball. Good pass on the inside, off the back of some great aerial work. And when a free hit just outside, Alistair Murray looking around. A free hit is the way of the Stingers. Just want to see them get a couple of shots off in this last seven minutes. Have a real crack at goal. Great ball on the inside. Winning the free hit. Luke Broadway did well. Adrian Lockley just controlling his Stingers troops. Sets everything up. And they're happy to walk in now. Right hand side. Couple of metres of space. Playing for the three. Aiden Parkin does well. Now it comes in board. It's one on one. Just shouldering through the inside. Billy Faye gives away the free hit. Good strength there by Collins. Usually a midfielder just flooding back and making sure he's covering off on his opposing midfielder. And now really running hard to inject himself into the forward line on this right-hand side. So he's keen for an extra goal. Here he goes now. Nice jink into space. Great inboard ball. Just goes across everybody. 
So a major fall away press now, almost coming all the way back to the halfway line. And this can also create uh, attacking opportunities. It's not necessarily a defensive mindset, but just opening up the space in behind uh, the defensive line of the Stingers. So when they get the turnover, they can go with space, much like Collins just did there, jinking behind, run at pace. But um, it's a good tactic to use. Great ball and a good first touch for Matt Willis down the right. Just tries to go through. That would have been on for all money. It was a marvellous inside ball that you just saw bitten double back on and almost snuck through. It's a nice lead, good connection, just didn't quite find the pass. Five minutes to go. Down here at the Fremantle, Coburn Magpies. WA taking on the NT. Good ball backwards. Crafty work by Roberts. Harvey has a good look. Looking for peeling for a free. James Collins was up and about. Doesn't get rewarded for anything there. Looks like Thunder Six are really trying to chase a goal. Probably got the mindset that they're actually a couple of goals behind and really trying to chase the game. with the Stingers tonight. Who's impressed you? I think uh, Adrian Lockley in the middle has been quite good. Um, I've also thought that um, Gupti defence and then his ability to inject himself into the attack as well has been pretty good. Um, but Zach Rackus, I just think that he's been a standout um, for such a young player. Uh, hopefully, you know, he gets an opportunity when it comes to the hockey one and perhaps representing Adelaide Fire and maybe in the long term actually making it uh, all the way to the Stingers if they get back into the Hockey One competition. But, yeah, Zach Rackus has been uh, pretty inspirational up front and created opportunities. I think he had a good 21s tournament as well, so he'd walk away pretty happy with his campaign. On another night, he would have got two goals or two goal assists in the exact same way he's been playing tonight, you feel. Just across the back, three and a half to go. Stingers looking for a consolation one probably at this point. Overall success here tonight, that's for sure. Yeah, great turnout. Huge turnout. Good quality game as well and um, some nice goals in the end. Just across the back, Farmillo. Happy to just play 1-2-1-2. One, two, one, two. Tries to get that one a little bit more piercing across halfway. Just runs over the sideline. In board ball here for Goulding, shifts it right. It could have been Kyle Potter the first pass. A little foot just in the corner. Risky ball in the middle, a lob for not many meters. Just leave it to the captain, Lockley, to bring it down. They have to retreat and then start shifting it out the right-hand side. Nick Hill sends it up the middle. Doesn't find the intended target. So just offers up half a chance here. Matt Lewis passes forward. Good ball by Kyle Potter. Now they find themselves in dangerous territory once again. Confusion there, not a goal. There are a few murmurs in the crowd wondering whether or not that had been pushed inside the circle. But of course it was pushed outside, so it wasn't a goal. Straight through the middle, no goalkeeper in sight. Kyle Potter, with a minute and a half left on the clock, is going to get the Thundersticks third here. Well, you've got to go for it if you're the Stingers and take the keeper off and see whether or not you can get a goal back. But it does uh, make it a little bit liable at the back to be open to scoring. But this is what the whole game is about, is uh, getting the experience and learning to play without a keeper and hopefully forcing uh, that extra forward to go, go forward and perhaps score a goal. So uh, invaluable experience being learnt here tonight. As we count down the final two minutes of this game, we can move over to the Thundersticks then. Who's been the real highlights for you out here? 
Well, I think I've been impressed with uh, Marshall Roberts in, in defence. I think he's had a couple of nice uh, intercepts and really held his structure uh, well and linked in nicely with Matt Bird on this right-hand side. This might just be one last opportunity here for the Stingers in their attacking 25. Skipper Lockley takes a look around. They have one screaming for it down the extreme right. Just couldn't quite trap that one. I know Gupti wins the free, but almost gave it away. One minute to go here. Great ball inside. Just bouncing straight off the keeper's pads. Couldn't find the deflection they were after. And they can swing around the left here. Hill sends it down. Happy to receive it back. They just need to keep... In control of the ball here, try build something. Good deep turns inside, just gets tackled. A little bit of left, right, left, right, chasing away with 37 left on the clock. If they can't make this tackle here, it'll pretty much be the end of the game. Russell just really trying to wind the clock down, hold it in the corner here, not give anything away or at least win the free hit. But he's having his own little mini game. Three or four pirouettes just down in that corner. Did well to stay in control the whole time. Eventually gives it away. 15 ago, and the Stingers know it. This is their final chance. They got people looming deep. Farmillo. That'll just about do it, I think. A wonderful effort here at the Fremantle Coban Magpies turf. Certainly a wonderful exhibition match. Really enjoyed watching the Stingers in action tonight and hope that this is the first of uh, many. has just been a fantastic evening down here. It's just good to see how many came down to support this game as well. We see decent crowds every single week in the WA Premier Hockey, but this is just a whole other step up, especially on just a casual Thursday night. Everybody wants to come down. The hoodies are on, beanies are on, pizza, burgers, it's all here. Well, it's national level hockey on your doorstep and uh, it's not too often that you get it here at Fremantle. So um, I think it's been a real treat, a, a wonderful exhibition match, great quality hockey, uh, a few spec uh, specky goals as well, which was great to see in the end. And uh, as I said, I think it's going to be the first of many for this Stingers side and hopefully they can go on. And uh, from the looks of it, we've also uh, got the coach with us on the sideline, Jason Butcher, who's well known to the WA community, but also Northern Territory. Yeah, thanks, Ash. Jason Butcher with me. Jason, how do you assess? the game yeah I think with the the things that we came in with um you know we had one of our key players pulled out with COVID this morning Joel Carroll got pulled out a week ago um so we had a lot of experience lost uh, nine of our boys that played today uh, played 21s as well so they've just finished the national championship um and I think we had 10 debutants uh, so it's been a significant period of time before we've been on this stage so um with the preparation we had and um, the age and the experience and all those things, I think our guys have done an outstanding job. And certainly your, your young players are really exciting. Um, who were the players that stood out for you? I oh, don't want to, don't want to personal. I, I think um, Hugh Wiltshire has been outstanding through the 21s tournament um, as well as tonight. And I think Billy Fay, same things, had an outstanding 21s tournament um, and really stood up for us tonight. But right across the board, we have guys where this is a, it's a big step and probably even a. Uh, an unfair ask of us to put them straight into this um, and I think all of our young guys did outstanding jobs. Yeah they certainly did. Uh, congratulations tonight, not the result you wanted but uh, thanks for your time. Thanks mate, appreciate it. Jason Butcher, down sideline with Josh Dwayne. Thank you for all your efforts tonight there uh, Josh. And actually just before we go tonight, your final thoughts. Are we really happy as the Perth, the Perth Thunder stick, so we're happy to go away with 3-0. I think that they'll be happy with that, but so, they're certainly happy that they've been able to work on uh, some of the structures and set plays that they'll be wanting to take into Hockey 1, but maybe a bit disappointed with some of the skill execution errors, And uh, but that's, that's the game. They're going to walk away knowing what it is that they have to work on, and that's what you want in preparation for October. Stingers certainly very happy that there's that experience that has been given to them, uh, a very proud coach, and understandably so. Well, that's it for us here tonight. It's been a great exhibition match. Perth Thundersticks win 3-0 over the NT Stingers. Thank you all very much for joining us, and we we'll hope to catch you in Hockey 1 in the near future. Thank you and bye.